Bobby and Tommy talking over plans for Thanksgiving. What were they really talking about before the game? This is a game I got to win and he's got to win. And well, I don't want him to win. And he don't want me to win. So somebody's it's just one of those things we can't both win. You watched it on ESPN. Chris Ricks leading the 11th ranked Seminoles. He's been the subject of controversy. Center Antoine Marambo says of Ricks, I see as an offensive lineman times where some of the guys will be open out there and he just takes three steps and tucks the ball and he runs. Your thoughts, Kirk Herbstreet, please. I think anybody who's followed Florida State over the last couple years when Ricks has been under center knows that there's been some speculation behind closed doors, but for it to surface after a tough loss, I, you know, as a former player, as a former quarterback, I'd have a problem with that. Picking up late in the first, 14-7 Tigers, second and seven, Ricks has two open receivers, and what does he do? He takes the sack from Nick Eason. Right there. Okay, now what? Same drive for Chris Wicks and the Knowles. So it's Ricks, back to pass, and he'll get, boom, hammered by Bryant McNeil. Ricks is down. He spent most of the second quarter on the bench. After a Clemson field goal, Leon Washington to receive. Washington up the gut, 97 yards to the house. Poor special teams missed tackles the problems for Clemson, especially in the first half. 21-17, Knowles. Clemson coming back, showing some toughness. Willie Simmons, 17-27, 293 yards and two touchdowns, finding Derek Hamilton, 24-21, Clemson. Second and goal, nine seconds left in the half. Ricks back in, finding Tallman Gardner, touchdown. That play set up by a 64-yard run by Greg Jones. Early second half, same score, Simmons. Trouble. Intercepted twice in this game. Here's one of them. Great catch by Rufus Brown with a pick. We need another look just in case you looked away for another bowl of cornflakes. It's Rufus Brown with a great pick. He held on. The turnover would lead to an FSU touchdown. Still in the third now. With a score 35-24, Simmons finding his target to Hamilton. Nice pass, better catch. Clemson would get in the end zone to cut the lead to four. In the fourth, Knowles by 10, Greg Jones. Greg Jones, the 240-pound junior. All this guy's gonna do is break eight tackles for a 21-yard touchdown run. You name it, Jones looks like Marshall Falk, Earl Campbell, Ricky Williams, whoever. 22 rushes, 165 yards, three touchdowns on Thursday. Rush for 160 a year ago against Clemson. Bobby now 4-0 against Tommy. You know, we talk about the family. Oh, the family, the family. The first time we played the second. This one really hurt. Because I had to win a stinking game. And I got to whip him to do it. It's no fun when you whip your son. Oh, boy. You know, and Tommy really wanted to beat Dad. No question about it. Especially if he retires, you know? Bobby Bowden now 4-0, as you know by now, against Tommy as a head coach. But that's not the biggest case of father-son domination in sports history. Ed Diddle Sr., you heard me, went 11-1 against Ed Jr. as head coach at Western Kentucky University. Ah, uh, those Diddles. Yeah. The Big Ten, Illinois and Minnesota with the Metrodome occupied Saturday, a little Thursday night action. John Butcher stripped from behind, lands right into Duke Preston's arms. How did that happen? Preston, look at him, he's rolling down. Now it hits him right in the chest. He had no idea to lay right into his chest. A gain of zero yards for Illinois' offense. Now Illinois about to score, and Butcher drops back. Sacked again, ball on the turf. And Bradley Vance causing that. And now we've got some special teams issues for Illinois. Matt Mines punt blocked. Jermaine Mays recovers, and Minnesota wins going away. State coming in ranked 22nd first quarter Fresno State on the kickoff after a Rams touchdown Dexter win incoming oh he net moors him right on the field Kyle Goodman doing the honors up and over say hello to my little friend later first quarter Colorado State punts Adam Jennings receives and Adam Jennings keeps on matriculating the ball down the field 59 yards 10-7 Fresno State after the Adam Jennings touchdown Second quarter now. Colorado State down 10. It's 17-7. Bradley Van Pelt scrambles left. Going to keep it himself, and that was a good call. Bradley Van Pelt, not real fast, but he's fast enough. 79 yards. He ran for 125 in the game, and the Rams are within three. It's 17-14. Third quarter, they're down 29-14. Van Pelt, David Anderson, and this is poor coverage. 
70 yards. Rams down now 29-21. Van Pelt 10 of 21, 214 yards and two touchdowns. Final minute, fourth and goal. Colorado State down eight. Cecil Sappy ran for 94. So now they're going to go for two in the tie. Here's your ball game. Van Pelt to send it into overtime. Incomplete. Fresno State holds on 32-30, denying Sonny Lubick his 100th career win. BYU at Utah State. End of the first half. BYU's Brett Engeman. Hail Mary. And sometimes your prayers just aren't answered. Picked off by Jerome Dennis, and Jerome Dennis keeps on matriculating the ball down the field. 75 yards. Aggies take a 34-7 lead. Not quite what BYU was looking for to end the first half. But they come back in the second half. Down 34-28 in the fourth. Engeman, Gabe Reed, 18-yard. BYU down 27. Comes back to beat Utah State, 35-34.